we are in a kind of ni'mah that we are not grateful to. Therefore, when you see, I just would like everybody to mute themselves. What's the problem? Yeah. The reason why we say we are in ni'mah, we say alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin, is number one, because we have finished Ramadan. We have finished Ramadan. We were talking about Ramadan in Sha'ban. And then when Ramadan came, we started speaking about Ramadan. Didn't know that we're going to finish Ramadan. After Ramadan came, now we're speaking about how we're going to maintain our Iman bi idnillahi ta'ala. How to maintain our Iman, inshallah, we're going to speak about this one on Thursday, on the 3rd of June, same time, 9.15. Tune in with the same ad, the same Zoom link from Jumeirah Learning Islamic Center. But the reason why we say we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because Allah is giving us the opportunity of seeing being on the face of the earth rather than being under the earth. We know very well what has been happening. At the beginning of Ramadan, we were all speaking about, are we going to finish Ramadan? Why? Because we know very well of the COVID. We knew very well of what's been happening around. And, you know, not many people that has been, uh, has started Ramadan, in, uh, has many people who started Ramadan, oh, why during Ramadan, preparing for Eid, they could not make Eid because the time came. But as long as we're still here, able to sign in, able to listen to the words of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while you are in the comfort where you can sit and relax and listen to the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, we say Alhamdulillah. I mean, can you imagine back in the days for you to get a hadith, you would have had to travel to get one hadith. We know a student, a student of knowledge who traveled for 30 days to get one knowledge. Like how we spoke about Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, one day he traveled for almost like 45 days. And he went to gain a knowledge, one hadith, because he heard there was someone who was giving, who was narrating hadith. But when he went there to gain the knowledge, he found out that the one who was giving knowledge was actually not in the right state of mind. Can you believe? He just returned back just for one hadith. He heard someone was, was he heard someone was actually giving out hadith, he traveled to that person. Now we ask ourselves, are we going to have any kind of are we going to have any kind of excuse in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our jahl? Are we going to have any kind of excuse on Yawm al-Qiyamah to tell Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Allah, I did not know? But the thing is, the knowledge is there everywhere. It's but let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters out there. The knowledge will be there. But you know what, what, what invites you towards the knowledge? It's your heart. It's your heart the knowledge. Let me tell you something. There are people nowadays, let's say now, now. I may be sending out the link or people might be coming to the class now, once they find out or they, they realize, oh, it's only it's going to be half an hour, it's going to be one hour, straight away, what do they say? I've got no time for this. Yeah? Because now the trend that's going on, people want only 30 seconds of clip. 
Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. They want to learn Islam with only 30 seconds. They want to learn Islam only with one minute of Instagram. Now they come and say, you know, now Islam is about, you know, you have to go according to, to the social media. You know, you just, you know, just give something for like 15, 59 minutes, 50, 59 seconds, one minute, people are going to benefit. What are you going to benefit in one minute? Well, there are things like say, for example, some of all the mashayikh there, you can take, you can cut some of the good thing for one minute and put on Instagram or uh, TikTok or all those uh, social media, you can do that. But the thing is, because people have already programmed themselves that they have no time, we program ourselves that we have no time that is the reason we don't find people seeking knowledge nowadays. If they see a clip on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, like five minutes and above, they don't, they don't go for it. I don't know. I don't know why. Because we claim we have no, we have no time. But in reality, we have a lot of time. We can sit down and watch a Bollywood movie for two and a half hours. We can sit down and have and watch a Hollywood movie for like Wow, how many minutes is that Hollywood movies? I don't know. Well, one hour, one and a half hour. They have time for this. People may have time to go for shisha and sit down over there, you know, and speak about mundane, and speak about worldly affairs. People may have time for half an hour still and gossip and, and, and listen to things that are not beneficial. But for them to sit and watch something and listen to something that is beneficial, they think that something is too long. Sheikh, it's too long. Yeah, this is what's happening nowadays. So that is why you find the knowledge is being, that's why you find the knowledge is being, is being reduced. I mean, one of the signs of the day of judgment is that the, the knowledge are going to, the, 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 the knowledge are going to decrease. The thing, uh, ignore is going to spread. And the Prophet Muhammad said it's because the ulama are going to die. And one of the things, I know when you think about it, is because of this. People think they have no time for knowledge anymore. I mean, subhanAllah, it's good. It's good. You're learning about what's happening. You're watching the news. Yeah. You want to know what DBC is saying. You want to see what CNN is saying. You want to know what all the news are saying, which is very good. The news is for today. Tomorrow is going in the in the garbage, trash, finish. The news that you spent out today to see and watch and contemplate, tomorrow it's another one. After tomorrow, it's another one. For the Islam, the deen of Allah stays with you until you go into your qabr. The deen, the knowledge of Islam, it stays with you until you go into your qabr. So whatever you learn today, whatever you learn in the khutbah, whatever you learn in any places, in regard to Islam, trust me, it is an You interfere with it. It is a knowledge that you benefit yourself and you benefit people after you. When you pass away, people carry on that knowledge. But my brothers and sisters out there, when we come in to listen to any session of Islamic knowledge, take pride in it. Just make, just ask, just thank Allah Azza wa Jal for, for bringing you to that place. First of all, for you to come and listen to the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's from your Iman. You want to know about Islam. You want to know what he wants to say. You want to know how, he can, how we can relate to this life with Islam. We want to know all these. For therefore, for those people who are here now, I give you the glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you to be here. There's nothing that happened except by the wills of Allah. So for you to come here is by the wills of Allah. It's because Allah wants khair for you. May you if Allah Azza wants something good for you, he make you understand the religion. 
And this is how we make you understand the religion by coming and opening the way of knowledge for you. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, we have this kind of platform that I would urge the Muslim Ummah and the brothers and sisters out there, wherever you are, make sure that you're ready to, to sign in any time. Wherever you are, walking in the park, you are, uh, uh, you are in your car, wherever you are, if ever you have to pay for your data, put extra data on your phone for the sake of Allah Azza wa Sadaqah. How many mashaykh are on, are on, are on uh, live and because why? Why do you think they do that? Because they know that it is easy to spread our knowledge. So they take opportunity of doing so. Of course, you need to know what kind of sheikh you're listening to. You can't just listen to any sheikh out there. You need to know their proper aqidah. You need to know their, their credentials. You need to know uh, their way of, 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 of delivering how they understand the Quran and the Sunnah. But definitely, knowledge is compulsory on everyone, male and female, as to what the Prophet Muhammad said. For verily knowledge, my brothers and sisters, without knowledge, you will not be able to attain happiness in this dunya. Without knowledge, you will not be able to say la ilaha illallah before you die, trust me. Without knowledge, you will not be able to have peace and light in your qabr. Because you need knowledge in order for you too to say Allahu Rabbi, Al-Islamu Dini, wa Nabi Sallam, Nabiyyi. You need knowledge to know, to be able to say Allah is my Lord when the angel will come and ask you in your qabr, who was your Lord. You need to know who was Muhammad وسلم, for you to be able to say, and Nabi وسلم, used to, was my, was the last messenger. You need to know what is Islam in order for you to be able to say Islam was my religion, or else how are we going to do it? We're going to fall into error, knowing that it's, uh, believing that something okay, but in reality, without knowledge, we're not going to earn anything. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah of Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The first verse that was revealed in the Quran was not about salah, was not about zakah, was not about jannah or jahannam, was about what? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord, the one who created you. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ The Lord who created man, العلق, from the sticky fluid. اقرأ وربك الأكرم. Read for verily your, your Lord is the most generous one. علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. For verily, he taught man of what they do not know. Allah taught man of what they do not know. If you don't get taught, how are you going to come to know? Allah has removed you from the womb of your mother. You being an ignorant person, you never knew anything. I never knew anything. You never knew anything when you were born. It's just that you had to actually get into knowledge. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord. Afala yatadabbarun al-Qur'an. Don't you ponder over the Qur'an. Again, knowledge. Qaleelan ma tadhakkarun. Allah says, afala tashkurun, afala tadhakkarun, afala ta'qilun, afala. Don't you think, don't you ponder, don't you reflect. Don't you think deeply? It's all because of your knowledge. If we're not going to use it, Allah Azza wa has given us the brain in order for us to understand what is right and what is wrong. But if we're not able to use it in a proper way, then we're going to be responsible. Because let me tell you something, Allah said in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحَرِ 
for their reading. I have honored the Bani Adam. I have honored Bani Adam. Allah has honored us. Allah did not say that to the uh, to the Manaika. Allah did not say that for the jinn. Allah did not say that for the animals. Allah did not say that for the plants. He said, Wala qad bani Adam. For verily, for verily, I have honored the Bani Adam. Why? The ulama says, why? You know why? Because we've got intellect. We can read. Animals can't read. We can differentiate what is right and what is wrong. Animal can't do so. We can read. We can differentiate what is right and what is wrong. We can learn, we can memorize. If ever Allah has given us the brain and we don't use it how it's supposed to be used, what's the difference between me and an animal? Hmm. This is it. Therefore, one of the questions that you're going to get on Yom al Qiyamah, the money, how you got it, how you spent it, how you spent your youth, how you spent your life, and which knowledge you seek, and how do you use it? Mm. Well, we're not saying that to go out for you is good, it's good, you need to. We have to be the best of, of engineers, we have to be the, be the best of mathematicians, we have to be the best of everything. Everything. Engineer, doctor, mechanic, that, that, all the stuff, we need to be the best. But at the same time, we should not neglect the Quran and the sin of the Prophet because this is what we're going to bring with us in our janazah. This is what we're going to bring with us in the grave. When we wake up on Yom Al Qiyamah, this is what we're going to hold our knowledge. How do we use it? We're going to face Allah Azza wa Jal. All your shahada, all your, uh, your certificate of what you've got in this dunya is going to be here. <laughs> Once you put in the grave, it can be torn away. No one can use it. It's done, my salam. The certificates, what you get now. But the one that you're going to use in your qabr, the one that you're going to take with you to Allah Azza wa Jal is the knowledge of La ilaha illallah. What is La ilaha illallah? Muhammad Rasulullah. Who, who was Muhammad? The deen, aqeedah. Thiq, sunnah. So, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. In this class, we have finished, uh, we, we finished about, we, we spoke about la ilaha illallah. We spoke about Muhammad Rasulullah. We spoke about aqeedah. We spoke about all the shirk. We spoke about all the innovation. We spoke, we spoke about the proper creed that we need to do. We spoke about salah for almost like three months, a full three month workshop salah. We spoke about Siyam, we spoke about the Quran, we spoke about many things. For, uh, all of these recordings are there on YouTube. You want to go, you can go and find them, inshallah. So on a Tuesday, my brothers, it is actually a class. It is not a lecture, it's a class. The lecture is on a Thursday, yeah? And on Tuesday is a class that we do something and we continue it the next um, Next Tuesday, Tuesday again and again. So it's good like a silsila, like an episode, like sessions over sessions, yeah? But uh, I know half an hour was already gone because I took it two weeks off. So now we're starting again. So the last time we finished the Tuesdays was about Salah, was about Siyam. Alhamdulillah, we finished Siyam, we finished Eid, we finished all the thick of uh, Siyam. Now, today, I will be speaking about Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha. Because it is a surah that we read constantly. A surah that we read in the morning and in the evening. A surah that we read in our five daily prayers. A surah that we read for Shifa. It is as, as a cue. A surah that we read as a dua. And we read that day and night. And among us, alhamdulillah, we have revert Muslim. We have Muslim that had just been accepted Islam. And I'm going to, if they're around here, hopefully I can ask them to speak a little bit. 
And uh, definitely we need to know, not only because we have rivers among us as students, it's because we ourselves, I myself, when I be teaching, when I be uh, spreading the knowledge of Surah al fatih I be learning new things. So all of us, no matter how old we are, 50 years old, 65 years old, 12 years old, 30 years old, and we're learning about Surah Fatiha. Don't be like, oh, I know Surah Al Fatiha. Gee, you're coming again, Surah Al Fatiha. Let me tell you something. Each and every time you learn about Surah Al Fatiha, you get to know something new. You come to know about something new in the Allah Ta'ala. So, inshallah, today we will do Surah Al Fatiha, and inshallah, next week we'll continue. I'm going to choose some kind of, of, of tafsir. Uh, which is easy tafsir. It's not that we're going to make tafsir one surah for like three or four months. No, no, no. One, one surah, we try to finish it in our one hour with question and answer. We try just try to make a summarize of it just for you to know about what the surah is talking about and what Allah, how Allah revealed it, why he revealed it. Yeah, quick tafsir. We're going to do that, inshallah, for the next, for the coming weeks. If ever there's anything I would like to change, I will change in between, inshallah. So, uh, today we in the night Ta'ala, we've got uh, we've got different brothers here, mashallah. And I can I see that brother Keith is here. Keith, salamu alaikum. Let me just try to speak to him. Keith, oh Khalid, I'm ask. I can't hear you. Hello. Hey, salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Okay? I, I mean, Keith, we got music on your background. Yeah, Is it okay yeah. if you just lower the music? Sure, sure, sure. I'll try to do that. Yeah, because I want to speak to you. <laughs> All right, Keith. Keith, actually a new Muslim. And uh, definitely, we'll uh, we'll address that, inshallah. So I would like Keith to uh, to speak to us, inshallah. Why and how did he enter into Islam, or why did he enter into Islam? All right, I think he's gone. Anyway, no problem. I just get my share my screen. Let me share my screen here. I right, know what is the case, we'll get back, we we'll get back to you later on, inshallah. Okay, so we've got uh uh Shafiq Ismail, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam Alhamdulillah, good. What about you, Shaykh? I'm okay, alhamdulillah. As long as you guys are okay, I'm okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Khair. Um, do you mind reading for us, please, loudly? Yes, please. Bismillah uh, rahim What do we know in regards to Surah Al-Fatiha? The mother of the Quran, the opening Surah of the Quran, it is a dua, it is a cure, it is a pillar to be recited in the prayer. Wow, mashallah. Hmm. What do we know about Surah Al-Fatiha? These are the names that we may say in regard to Surah Al-Fatiha. What do we know about Surah Al-Fatiha? They're not the name, but what do we know about Surah Al-Fatiha? Number one, Surah Al-Fatiha is the mother of the Quran. Yeah. Let me tell you something, my brothers out there. The boss of the house is who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone said the wife. <laughs> yeah, the boss of the house is who? Is the wife. So if you are the kids, who is the boss in the house? They're going to say, Mama. At the end of the day, if the dad is not feeling well, the house goes on. The energy in the house carries on as normal. The dad is not in the house, 
the house still goes on normal. But the day the mother is sick, the day, for example, the mother passed away, the day the mother is gone or has gone out somewhere, everyone is handicapped in the house. This is something that Allah has given to the mother. The holy kind of power that only when we only when they we lose them or when they're not around, this is when we know their wealth. So when we say the boss of the house <laughs> is the mother, the Quran, they the boss among all the surah. And who is the mother of the Quran? Surah Al Fatiha. Um Al Quran. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day he saw a Sahaba and he called the Sahaba and he told the Sahaba, do you know what is the Umm Al-Quran? He said, Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. He said, for verily it is the Surah Al-Fatiha. The Surah Al-Fatiha, my brothers and sisters out there, is the mother of the Quran. So by just you knowing that it's the mother of the Quran, it shows you how great it is. Even to the extent that when they compiled the, the Quran, they made it, they put it at the first, at the first surah. Mm. So number one, the mother of the Quran shows you how big this surah is. Number two, the opening surah of the Quran. Fatihah al-Kitab. Fatihah al-Kitab is mean the opening of the Quran definitely that was given uh, because once you open the Quran, especially the script of the Uthmani, the third thing is Surah al-Fatiha. But that did not mean it was revealed at first. That was not the first Surah that was revealed. It just put in there the first one because this is something that we know it is the pillar of Salah and the most, uh, the, the, the mother of, Salah, of the Quran, therefore it is there at the first page in the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha is the dua. Sah or not? Surah Al-Fatiha is the dua, and we're going to come to know why is it a dua. Because each and every time you read an ayah of Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah replies to you. Allah Akbar. Hmm. Each and every time, you read a verse from the Quran, Allah replied to you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe. Allah replied back to you, for verily my, my slave has glorified me. My slave has praised me. It is for my slave, I'm going to give him what they ask for. This is... Surah uh, Al-Fatiha actually dua. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim. You're asking Allah Azza wa Jal for istiqamah. Uh, asking Allah Azza wa Jal for guidance. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You praise Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Praising Allah, Malik Yawmiddin. Glorifying Allah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. You're confessing, Ya Allah. You're admitting that, Ya Allah, it is you that we worship. You that we seek for help, <laughs> guide us to the straight path. Ajib. So this dua, you praise Allah Azza wa Jal, and then you ask whatever need to be asked. Surah Al-Fatiha, it's a cue. And we're going to speak about it. Why is it a cue? You're sick, read Surah Al-Fatiha on yourself. You got bitten by a snake with a scorpion, read Surah Al-Fatiha on yourself. You feel that you've been affected by evil eye, read Surah Al-Fatiha on yourself. You feel you may affected by jinn, read Surah Al-Fatiha on yourself. It's a cue. Physical cue and a spiritual cue as well. And Surah Al-Fatiha, it's a pillar to be recited in, in the Salah. If you don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha, your Salah will not be accepted. Except if you're reading in Jama'ah, that's another different opinions. But if you're reading Surah, if you're reading Surah, if you're reading alone, 
and uh, you omit Surah Al-Fatiha, then your Salah not accepted. La Salah illa bi Fatiha al-Kitab. There's no Salah except that you read Surah Al-Fatiha. All right, I hope this is pretty clear. If you've got any question, you can raise your hand. And then we're going to entertain your question, inshallah. The name of Surah Al-Fatiha. The name of Surah Al-Fatiha. Carry on, Tafir. It is named Al-Fatiha, the opening, because it opens the book and by it the recitation in prayer commences. Both the book of Allah and the prayer starts in brackets, opens up with Surah Al-Fatiha. Second, it is also named Umm al-Quran, the mother of the Quran, and Umm al-Kitab, the mother of the book, according to the opinion of the majority. Next, sur Surah Al-Hamad, the Surah that praises Allah. Definitely. We've spoken about Surah Al-Fatiha, that it opens the book, yeah? And it is also named Umm al-Quran, the mother of the Quran. The mother of the Quran. We spoke about that. And it's also known as Surah Al Hamd. Surah Al Hamd, because it is a surah that actually says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's because in this, in, this, in this surah, Allah is being praised there. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah being praised. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Allah being praised. Malik, Yawm al Din, Allah being praised. You're showing Allah Azza that you need his help. It's praising Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is known to be Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Umm Al-Quran, the Umm Al-Kitab. Uh, you know, you get to get to know more of the names. So this is the name of Surah Al-Fatiha. Let's speak about the hadith that speak about the name of Surah Al-Fatiha. The hadith that speak about the name of Surah Al-Fatiha. We're going to know, inshallah, verses by verses, what is Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, the verse, what it speaks about. And this is just a small introduction of Surah Al-Fatiha. And I think it's good that you know about Surah Al-Fatiha because this is a Surah that you read day in, day out. And it is a Surah that you actually, if ever any non-Muslim approach you, you may need to give them these kind of information. What is Surah Al-Fatiha? They've got different kind of names. Why do we call them Surah Al-Fatiha? And not only you, your kids. Because you may read different uh, hadith, it may say Surah Al-Fatiha, Umm Al-Kitab, Umm Al-Quran. So what do they mean? Are they, are they different surah? Are they same surah? Sabah Al-Mathani, Quran Al-Azim. Uh, all these are different names. We're going to speak about the names of Surah Al-Fatiha, bi-idhni Allah Ta'ala. Rizki, go on. Rizki, you here? Okay, Rizki is not here. Okay, he's here. Go on, Rizki. Oh, my question. Allah barakatuh. The hadith that speaks about the names of the surah. The messenger of Allah وسلم, said, uh, all praise and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of the universe. Is the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book, the servant uh, the seven often repeated verses and the the great Quran. Um, um al Quran, um al Kitab, Sab al Mutani, and al Quran al Adin. Why is it called the mother of the Quran? Ibn Jarr al Tabari said that it was named so because the meaning of the entire Quran is summarized therein. Shukran. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin is Umm al Quran, the mother of the Quran. Umm al Kitab, the mother of the book. Sab'i Mathani, the seven of repeated verse. How many verses are there? Seven. Al Quran al Azim, the great Quran. Hmm. These are the names of Surah al Fatiha. Subhanallah. So we're getting to know now. These are the names of Surah Al-Fatiha. 
So one by one, what is Sab'u al-Mathani? So we know what is Umm al-Kitab. We know what is uh, Umm al-Quran. And now we want to know what is Sab'u uh, al-Mathani. This is one of the name of Surah al-Fatiha. Go on, Rizki. Uh, it is uh, Sab al Matani. Is it? It is. It is also no, named Sab al Matani. The seven often repeated verses because they are frequently recited and indeed recited in every rakah of the prayer. And it is said because it contains seven verses. Hmm. Sab al Matani comes from the word seven. Matani means repeated verses. It is something that we repeat almost like 17 times we repeat Surah Al Fatiha in a day. Yes or no? Twice in Surah Al in, 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 in Surah Al Fajr, minimum. And then four times in Dhuhr. Uh, four times in uh, Asr. Three times in Maghrib and four times in Isha. A minimum on the Fard. We repeat Surah Al Fatiha in a day. How many times? 17 times. Uh, seven times. It is something 17 times. So that's called repeated verses. We repeat that almost 17 times in a day. Seven means seven. It contains seven verses. It contains seven verses. So that is why it is known to be as Sab'ul Mathani. Hopefully that's clear. So we know that it is known as Umm Kitab, Umm Al Quran, and Sab'ul Al Mathani. Sab'ul Al Mathani, inshallah. Something that's good for you to know. Why is it called Sab'u al-Mathani? Surah al-Hamd. Surah al-Hamd. Carry on, Rizki. Uh, surah al-Hamd. It is also named al-Hamd, the praise, because it contains mention of Hamd. Just as al-Baqarah is named, so because it contains mention of the cow. Some scholars also gave their the reasoning that Alhamd constitutes the heart of Al Fatiha. Mm. It's also known as Hamd because you know it's so Alhamd. There's a lot of praise in there and it's so Alhamd. You know, like for example, many of the surah that uh, you see the name is giving, uh, is being given from what is known to be from the surah. For example, Surah Al Baqarah, Al Baqarah, Al Kawthar, Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar. And certain So one of the reasons why the Quran the this surah was given this name. The Q Shifa. Iftikhar, are you here? Hopefully you're not driving. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. The cure as Shifa. It is also named as Shifa, the cure, due to what Ad Darimi reports from Abu Said. May Allah be pleased with him. From the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The opening of the book is a cure to every poison. The opening of the book is a cure to every poison. But like how I mentioned in the beginning, Surah Al-Fatiha is a cue to uh, every poison. And we're going to come to know as well uh, in the next slide about how can it be a cue to the poison. But any kind of poison that you get, you read Surah Al-Fatiha on it, it goes by Idhan Ta'ala. You know, sometimes some people, you, you know, people in different parts of the world, there are places where they have scorpions, insects, bites, uh, snakes, or whatever, may Allah protect us all. You, they, may, they might get beaten and whatever. The first and foremost thing what you do is to read Surah Al-Fatiha. On any kind of uh, bite that you get from all these kind of poisonous insect or reptile or whatever. Surah Al-Fatiha is the first and foremost thing that you do bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And of course, if ever you feel that uh, there's any kind of poison or whatever things that some people by mistake with the, the drink or you feel that you're eating something that's supposed to be eaten and you feel that it might be harmful to your body, read Surah Al-Fatiha. You can read Surah Al-Fatiha and blow in water and drink 
all these are called ruqya on yourself. You can do that without any harm, insha'Allah. Yeah, if you feel all these, you can actually read even in water and spit it in water and drink it. It comes the water, ruqya water. It's totally fine to do, insha'Allah, from Surah Al-Fatiha. From Surah Al-Fatiha. Carry on. Go on, Iftikhar. Ar-Ruqya, the spiritual cure. It is also named Ar-Ruqya, the spiritual cure due to the hadith of Abu Sayyid. May Allah be pleased with him. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari that after he had recited it to, to cure a person who had been bitten by a scorpion, the Messenger وسلم, said to him, and what made you to know that it was a ruqya? Uh, same thing what happened. This was actually uh, where some of the Sahaba were stranded by some of the uh, treacherous tribe. And then it found out, they found out that uh, when they were being trapped by them, uh, what happened, they heard, the Sahaba heard that the leader of that place, who was not a good man, uh, had been beaten by scorpion. And they said, well, we've got a cue for it. So one of the Sahabi went there and read Surah Al-Fatiha on the bite, and it was all cued. And then they were released. <laughs> and then they were released. And then they told it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the Prophet told him, what made you know that this was the Ruqya? Ruqya means like a kind of, uh, it's a, like, a, like a reading medicine. You know, like a shifa, you know, like you see, now can it come, you, now you come to know how uh, 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 the, 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 the Surah Al-Fatiha, how, how, how powerful it is. You know, the first and foremost thing, if you want, if ever, like say, one of the questions that I usually get, uh, uh, you see, they say, for example, uh, people cry or the kids start crying, the babies start crying at Maghrib time. Yeah, I remember the question I got yesterday. That the baby start crying at Maghrib time. Uh, you see, baby cries during the night. Or you see, suddenly you, you start feeling scared. Or you feel that, uh, you know, it's just read Surah Al-Fatiha. Quran. The Quran, Quran Quran Allah has, re has revealed the Quran and the Shifa as a whole, Quran and the Shifa. You know, but especially this is a spiritual cue. And even physical cue. But you know, when you look at the, uh, uh, the Surah Al-Fatiha, when you read them, yeah, you read them on yourself in the morning and in the evening, and uh, you want to read on your kids, you want to read on water and then uh, throw on yourself, you want to read on water and drink. It's all totally halal for you to do. People are, are, are suffering from evil eye. People are suffering from, 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 from spiritual... Uh, uh, Mischief, which is called jinn procession, and Surah Al Fatiha is the cue for it. Yeah, therefore, my brothers and sisters out there, uh, Surah Al Fatiha is a surah that's not only to be read in the Quran, they the uh, in the Salah, they the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it incumbent, has made it obligatory for you to read Surah Al Fatiha. Why, without you realizing, without you realizing, you will come to know that Surah Al Fatiha, you're reading Surah Al Fatiha in Salah, but remember. When you're reading it in salah, you're making dua. When you're reading in salah, you're praising Allah. When you're reading in salah, you're curing yourself from every kind of spiritual and physical harm. But therefore, uh, just by making salah, because this surah is so important and so like, worth reading every day, Allah has been obligated. So when you read it in your salah, without you even realizing that you've been cured by reading it, Without you being realizing, you're being protected by reading it in your salah. Allahu Akbar. First and foremost thing, what you do in the morning for Salat al-Fajr. Ah, Surat al-Fatiha. Allahu Akbar. First surah of, of, of uh, Sunnah of Fajr. Ah. Ah. Therefore, this is something that uh, it's worth uh, knowing and why when you actually know about the uh, the, 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 the names of Surah Al-Fatiha, this is just introduction of Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, and that, that we just went quickly on it, and just once you get to know these, it, it's going to work on your khushur. It's going to work on your khushur, on your, on your concentration of Salah. Therefore, 
Alhamdulillah. So what we talked about today is just the name of Surah Al-Fatiha, and we just spoke a little bit about uh, introduction about knowledge. But therefore, I urge you all, and uh, by the wills of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he make that easy upon us that we can come in here every Tuesday um, and uh, we, we can actually uh, spend some time together in sharing knowledge. And we're going to speak only about this one today, the name of Surah Al-Fatiha. Next week, we're going to speak about the revelation and the meanings and the benefit of Surah Al-Fatiha, inshallah. And I hope that you all sign in uh, with the same link. Uh, at the same time, on, on Thursday, after tomorrow, uh, 9.15, I'm going to speak about steadfastness in Salah with the same link. Uh, make sure that you can tune in and send it to your friends, uh, to the people all around the world. Make sure they come in so we can know how we can be steadfast and keep our Iman of Ramadan, even outside Ramadan. If you have any question, please, you can chat or you can unmute yourself and ask me. And number two, before we leave, I would like to ask a question. The time that we have put it here is 9.15. And that is 9.15 UAE time. Yeah? And that could be 6.15 UK time. All right? There are two options. Either we do this, like this class, 9.15 UAE time, or 7.15 UAE time. Which time would you guys prefer? You can put it on the chat because as for me, I'm flexible both time. And I want to know for whom, how easy it is for you all to attend. Would you prefer to come here 7, 7.30 UAE time or 9.15 UAE time? So you decide and tell me in the chat so I can, then I'll decide which one is better or who, what kind of, what, which, uh, which time is, is more flexible for you all? As for me, both of them, between Maghrib and Isha or after Isha are flexible in both. Because I know maybe you guys will be working, what time you come back home and what time you prefer. Some of you might prefer now, you might be on your bed, you might listen, that's fine. Some of you between Maghrib and Isha, you might be eating dinner. So let me, let me know inshallah in the chat so we can carry on this one. <laughs> if it is better to make it 9 15 right there. 9 15. Okay. Now I think I think I think 9 15 uh, is uh, something uh, I think it's uh, it's good. So inshallah we will we'll keep it 9 15 be in the light to Anna and uh, yeah, so next week, in the night, 9.15. And on Thursday, we're going to make it 9.15 as well. Because on Thursday is alternative. Uh, next week, I'll be there. And inshallah, uh, the Thursday after, going to be Sheikh Khalid. And uh, inshallah, even on, on Friday, on Friday after Asr, uh, I'm starting uh, some lectures, inshallah, on Friday. And uh, so going to be having uh, uh, some lectures going on, inshallah. Uh, maybe on Friday is going to come as well from Markaz Al-Manar. And we can benefit, inshallah. And uh, any question? Any question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the apt, uh, the very apt word, one word for Surah Al-Fatiha? Tell me again. What is the apt word? One word. In a one word for the meaning of Surah Al Fatiha. Oh, wait a minute. I think I lost some of the. Oh, a minute. A minute. I thought I find it. Okay, here we are. All right. Sorry. Can you tell me a question again, please? Yes. What is the apt word in one word? What the meaning of uh, Surah Al-Fatiha? The meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha? I mean, the in whole... A word. In a word. I'm sorry, I'm not able... 
no it is it's surah al-fatiha what is, what is the meaning of surah al-fatiha in a word apt word exact um, meaning uh, sheikh i'll just add to that i mean what he is asking is i mean how would you define surah al-fatiha with just one word am i right in brother? one word that is right right <laughs> you asked me a question that well <laughs> Well, I've told you all these names. The question that came down uh, from Revelation, yeah. But you're asking me a question that might be a little bit hard for me to uh, to answer because the Surah Al-Fatiha itself is uh, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha itself is Alhamd, the praiseworthy, the Shifa, the Q. That the Fatiha, the mother of the book, the mother of the Quran, and if you want to tell me, if you ask me, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha in one word, you make me scratch my head. I don't know because I've already told you four of the uh, four of the names that has been revealed on the Prophet. I said them. I can say Surah Al-Hamd, which means a dua. The supplication, uh, the praiseworthy, the cue, uh, the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book, the seven repeated verses. Yeah. So this is the thing that I can, I can, I can tell you. And of course, it's Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, Fatiha is well. We don't say it's Fatiha is the best name, but. Uh, that all of the names that the Prophet told us, it was wahi from, the, from Allah Azza wa Jal. So, uh, therefore, that's, I can only tell you is what, the, what was told to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shukran. Shukran, Dar Sheikh. Barakallah, Sheikh. Beautiful. Uh, uh, great. Any question? After Isha is the best time, and I got here on both days. Sheikh, is it true that the angel of death visits us five times in a day? Is it true that the angel of death visits us five times in a day? Uh, this uh, narration is not authentic. And what we know is angel of death come to us. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, I was just thinking of, of, of what I was doing for Salat al Isha. And Subhanallah, this medical mode came into my mind. And, and Subhanallah, and I was like, that Malik is not racist at all. And this just popped into my mind, like, Subhanallah, uh, it, it just say, uh, an angel that. If it's time for you to go, you know, there's not even a second that he delay. It's written for it to come, it's gonna come. No matter what. No matter what happened, it's going to come, it's coming to you. But it didn't have to come to you five times and think about it. What do I do? Medical mode didn't have to come to you five times in a day for you to think. I take the soul. No, no, no. Kun fayakum. Allah say, okay, your time is coming. Go take his soul. Go take her soul. Yeah, you know, go take this soul. But Subhanallah, there is. I tell you a story. Story, story of Sulaiman Ali Salatu Wassalam. Yeah, and that story, uh, the authenticity of it is uh, is is is, uh, is 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 doubted. So uh, it is the 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 story of Bani Israel. Uh, we take a lesson from it. It is, it is mentioned in Tafsir Ibn Kathir that speaking about medical mode, uh, Ajiba, the one day, Sulaiman alayhi was salam was speaking to his people. Sulaiman alayhi was salam was speaking to his people. And among the people, <laughs> I'm saying I'm feeling scared. <laughs> Among the people, 
there was a man who came and he was fixing at another man. So among the gathering, yeah, among the gathering, there was a man that was fixing and staring at another man. Yeah. So the man got scared. And he told Sulaiman salatu wasalam, this man is looking at me and is staring at me so much, and I'm very scared. Yeah. And Sulaiman salatu wasalam. So what happened is the man who was staring left. The man who was staring, he left. Because we don't know who is that man. So the other man went to Sulaiman and said, Yeah, yeah, Nabi Allah. There was that man who was just looking at me and staring at me. I got so scared. And uh, he's Sulaiman because he knows Sulaiman used to, you know, he used to control the jinn and he used to know what's happening. And he told the man, the one. Who was staring at you was Malik al Maut. And he was Malik, he was Malik al Maut looking at you. So he got scared. So he asked Sulaiman Ali him to send him to another place of the world. So Sulaiman Ali Salam, he could control the reh, he could control the wind, he could control the jinn. So it was said that he sent him to another part of the world. Yeah, around the subcontinent. From Palestine, yes, subcontinent, he was put over there. So when he went there, <laughs> subhanAllah, because what he was happened now? He left like he was running away from out. He saw the same man right there, staring at him in the place where he, le he left. He saw the man again, same man staring at him. And then it was said that it was medical mode because it was written for medical mode to take away his soul at this time, at this place. So medical mode, he had, his job is to be there at that time. So he went there at that time. So when he went there at that time, guess what? The person himself, came to this place. He was trying to run away from Malik al -Maud, from Suleiman, and he went to that place, and over there Malik al was waiting for him. And I said, the reason I was staring at you was because I was asked to remove your soul here in this land, but SubhanAllah, I didn't know what you were doing right there with Suleiman. And SubhanAllah, you run away from there, but you came to the place where you supposed your soul to be removed. <laughs> And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so wherever you want to try to run away from out, it's going to come to you. But wherever you are, even though you're in the highest tall building or in the deep ocean, you're trying to run away from out, it's going to come to you wherever you are. Therefore, back to the question, they don't know how to come and visit you five times in a day. They need to come and visit you one time in your lifetime. That's it. You got it? They don't know how to come and visit you five times in a day. They come and visit you one time in your whole life. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the best day of our life the day we see Malik al Maut. Allahumma ij'al. This is the dua that we say. Allah oh Allah, make the best of our day, the last day. We know very well when, uh, when uh, Subhanallah, when uh, Malik al Maut comes, when they come and remove your ruh, yeah, when they come. Your eyes, you can see the Malik al-Rahmah, 
you can see the angels of mercy and the angel of punishment. So at that moment, when you see medical mode, you want your soul to be removed in a very nice way, in a beautiful and soft manner. You're able to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. But this is what we look for. Therefore, the best of days is not the day you graduated from university. The best of days is not the day you got married. The best of days is not the day that you know you had your anniversary or you got your first kid or you got la 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 wallahi. La wallahi. The best of your days should be the day that Ya Allah make my best day in this dunya. The day that you make my last day. The day, my last day in the dunya, make it the best of days. You see medical mode, something that we've been hearing all the time, but when you see medical mode, Allahu Akbar. And then like how today I was speaking to someone in regards to when medical mode come and then take your soul and wrap it into the silk of white and clothe, perfume it. Bring it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give it to the angel of Rahmah, the good to Allah and come back. Today I was speaking to someone about that. How your soul get wrapped. How it bring it being brought up there to Allah Azza wa We're being perfumed. And the silk clothes, Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us among them. But this is something when it comes to medical mode. Inshallah, one day we speak about uh, more about uh, Al-Akhirah. Inshallah, I have a series that I would like to speak about from, I have uh, I have one series online, I'm going to send it inshallah in the group about uh, Malik, uh, the, 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 the series, the, 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 the journey of Akhirah from Maut until you enter Jannah. From the time you pass away, yes, Barzakh, from Barzakh, how you get up, how you go to Allah and how you speak to Allah and how from there, from Yom al Qiyamah and the trumpet and this until you enter Jannah. I have it somewhere on YouTube. I made it, I remember I made it once in, a, in one of the markas. I had to check it and maybe we can do that again, inshallah. So this is about medical mode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy uh, upon us for our soul to be removed, inshallah. The dua is, okay, I will repeat the dua. I will write it down. Uh, the dua is Allahumma, Allahumma ja'al, uh, Allahumma ija'al, khayra ayyamana, Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamana, Awati maha. Yep, inshallah. Allahumma ij'al. I'm writing it, yeah? Khaira ayyamana awati maha. Wallah, make our best day. Make our last day in this world as our best day. Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamana khawatima. All right, I think, I think you got it. I've written it there on the text. Allahumma ija'al khayra ayyamana khawatimaha. So this is something that we may, inshallah, yeah, something that we can benefit so we've got this one here and then what the other question i think someone got a question oh yeah someone yeah, exactly someone said i can put that on the Okay, let me just put this here then. 
All right. Yeah, exactly. You find it here. You can take a, you can take a picture of it. All right. Okay, this is one of it. And then you got another question. Did someone got a question? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to ask about Surah Al Fatiha as a means of ruqya. If I read on my cell phone for, or my child or something, if they hurt themselves, would it be only one time? And would it be that you're doing the same action of blowing into your hands in the end and then passing it on the body? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Surah Al Fatiha, uh, when it comes to uh, reading, for example, for the for the kids or any kind of thing, you can just read in your hand or blow. The reading of the hand and blow, this is better to do the three qul. Qul huwa Allahu ahay, qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Yeah? So, qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas, and qul huwa Allahu ahay. The Prophet Muhammad used to do that before going to bed. You know, he spit with three times. And then he would read it and then pass over his body, you know, his face and his body everywhere. He would do that three times. And when the Prophet Muhammad was so sick, Aisha radiallahu anha used to do that for him. Allahu Akbar. When the Prophet was sick, Aisha radiallahu anha did that and passed on the Prophet. So it shows that you can do that on your kids. As for Surah Al Fatiha, you can read one time. You can read three times, it is okay. One time, yes. three times, it is sufficient, inshallah. Okay? And if you want to read on water and spittle in water and then give them to drink, that's totally fine. If you want to read drink in, uh, uh, read in water and then when you take a shower, you can throw that on them, that's totally fine as well. With the Surah Al Fatiha, the three Qul, Ayatul Kursi, uh, the last two verses of uh, Surah Al Baqarah, Amin al Rasul Bima. Yeah, those are sufficient for you to read, inshallah. And Surah Al Fatiha, it was mentioned that the Sahabi, they read it only once. They read it only once. So, minimum is once, and then you can carry on. Some people they read it seven times, some people they read it three times. There's no limit for it, inshallah. But minimum is one time, within that ta'ala. Inshallah. I hope I've answered the question. And inshallah, we're going to speak about Barzakh. Uh, Sheikh, as you said, Surah Fatiha, the queue. Is it necessary to be in a state of wudu before reading Surah Fatiha? No, you do not have to be in state of wudu to read Surah Fatiha. To read, in, to read Surah Fatiha or to read the Quran in general or to make dua or to make adhkar, you don't need to be in a state of wudu. As long as you're in a state of ghusl, that's totally fine. The only time when you do not read or mention the name of Allah is when you are impure after you have had sexual intercourse. So then that's the moment when it's called sexually defiled. At that moment, you do not mention any name of Allah. But if ever you have no wudu in general, you have no wudu for example, you are on your menses, you are, you are experiencing your postpartum bleeding, you're not praying. At that moment, you don't need to have wudu to, to, to read Quran. You can read the Quran from your app, you can read Quran from your, mem from your memory, make dua, you can make a no problem. So for you to read Surah Al Fatiha, if you have no wudu, you can read. If you're on your menses or you are in your period or postpartum bleeding, you can read. No problem. You don't need to have wudu in order to read Surah Al-Fatiha as a ruqya. A great question. Uh, while giving salutations to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do we have to raise the hand and say it? No. There is no authentic proof that says you have to raise your hand while saying Allahumma salli wa sallim ala habibina Muhammad. No. Whenever you are, uh, you're traveling, just say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyina Muhammad. 
let's say you are driving, you're riding your bike, you're working, you're cooking, you're whatever. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala habibina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyina Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, though, but the best way of saying salutation of the Prophet is the Salah Ibrahimiyya, the Darud Ibrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. This is the best way of uh, sending peace and blessing upon the Prophet But the short form of it is Allahumma salli wa sallim ala habibina Muhammad. Oh Allahumma salli ala nabiyina Muhammad. Oh Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Easiest form. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever, whoever says 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will make the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intercede for him on Yom Al Qiyamah. Allahumma salli ala Nabiyina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Nabiyina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Habibina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Habibina Muhammad. 10 times in the morning and in the evening. It's quickly, easy, just less than a minute. Two minutes, you want to call it. So, this is something that how you don't have to raise your hand and send peace and blessing upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, someone said, Sheikh, we need Iman boosting sessions at least once a week to keep the pace. We need Iman boosting sessions. So someone is looking some Red Bull here. But, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I know where you're coming from. Maybe you want some kind of, uh, okay, let me tell you something. Each and every session that we give or any sheikh that are giving out there or student of knowledge like myself is that each and every session should be an Iman boosting session. I mean, for us to read today about the name of Surah Al-Fatiha, it's not just to know about the name of Surah Al-Fatiha or just to know about it. Khalas, we listen. Khalas, we go to bed now. No. Today we learn about the Surah Al-Fatiha. How can this boost our Iman up? It's going to make my Salah. I'm going to have more concentration while reading Surah Al-Fatiha. Wow. Now I came to know how, why is this Surah Al-Fatiha uh, known as Shifa? Why Allah says the Quran is Shifa? Why is it a cue? Why is it Sab'ul Mathani? Why is it that the mother of the kitab? So by knowing, it should be an Iman boosting. We don't always have to come here with stories. We don't always have to come here with, uh, what to call it, uh, kind of, uh, yes, stories or kind of way to boost Iman. This is one of the way of boosting your Iman, any kind of knowledge. By knowing La ilaha illallah is Iman boosting. Like today you come to know, uh, how do we send peace and blessing upon the Prophet Sallallahu in a short way? Allahumma salli ala nabiyyina Muhammad. That's it. You come to know about Malik al Maut. You come to know about the dua that we taught. I mean, this is Iman boosting. Even though you left today's lecture with one thing, one benefit, and you put it into practice, you put it into practice, it's Iman boosting. Oh, today I, come to, I came to know how do we say peace and blessing among the prophets I send them. Wow, I'm going to implement this into my life. Iman boosting, it boosts your Iman. Tomorrow after tomorrow, you see yourself a different person. Oh, today I came to know uh, the dua of what we say uh, for us, inshallah, to make Malik al in the best of, of, uh, of days. Oh, I'm going to do that, inshallah. So this is something. And we have other sheikh as well that come here. Uh, we have Sheikh Khalid, we have different mashaykh as well that come. Hopefully, the, 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 the session that we give could be something that I do want to call it Iman boosting, inshallah. Can address we got Sheikh, is it true? Ah, is it true that saying the dua after eating with all our mind sins being forgiven? The dua of the eating is Alhamdulillah. The dua of the eating is Alhamdulillah. When you say Alhamdulillah, the hadith says, 
when the when the when the slave of Allah Azza wa Jal say Alhamdulillah after he are eating, Allah Azza wa Jal praise that slave and say, Look, my slave has praised me after he has been fed. This is the hadith. Allah says, For verily, my slave has praised me after he has been fed. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. But the dua of, for example, wearing your clothes, this forgive your sin. Alhamdulillah, the dua of you, what you, you know, the dua that you read when you put your clothes on. So, what is the dua that you read when you put your clothes on? So, the Prophet Muhammad, whoever reads this dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all his, his uh, minor sin. The dua of, when you remove your clothes, you say, Bismillah. When you put on your clothes, you read the dua, Alhamdulillah, this is the dua that you read, that when you put on your, your clothes on. So this dua is when you read it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, forgive your minor sin. Bismillah ta'ala. If you want me to put that dua on, on the screen, we can do that. Any other question? Sheikh, I got a quick one. Make it quick, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, uh, yeah. uh, all good, Sheikh. How are things with you? Alhamdulillah, since when you never had a question, Iftikhar, go on. All right. With regards to Iqra bi'ismi rabbikal ala, the yeah. first ayah will be revealed. Okay. Now, there is, uh, uh, you know, the Quran being uh, revealed because of a lady actually coming and speaking to or asking a doubt to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So uh, was this ayah actually revealed during that dialogue between the woman and, uh, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How is that? Like, I just want to know that. Like, uh, just one minute, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just give me one minute. I'm just trying to get, put this over here. I don't know how I got that. Ah, oh, so you guys can check the dua opening the clothes on. Okay, yes, uh, uh, in regards to the the the, the revelation of Surah Al Fatiha, it was uh, how uh, it was revealed, number first and foremost is that it was revealed in order for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read it in the Salah, in order for, uh, uh, for it to be revealed. We have, we have uh, dispute among the scholars that half of it was revealed in, Surah, in, in Mecca and half of it was revealed in Medina. And what, where was it revealed? Was it in Mecca, was it in Medina? So it's the majority of and the most authentic one that it was revealed in Mecca. Therefore, it was revealed for uh, for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to read it in the Salah, especially after he came back from Isra al Mi'raj. But to speak about, to say that uh, there was a lady that came, that was the reason it was revealed, usually I have no. Uh, how it was revealed, Surah Al Fatiha was revealed, you know, when one day the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, was, uh, was with Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, yeah? I will tell you how it was revealed. Yeah, nothing to do with the lady. So then what happened? Okay. And then the Prophet heard a creaking sound in the sky. Yeah. And then uh, then the Prophet then Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, said that for verily, the Prophet said, What is this sound? Jibreel alayhi salam, said, This is a door that has opened in heaven, yeah, that has never ever opened before. Yeah, and then an angel came down and brought Surah Al-Fatiha and the last two verse of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah and that was given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how it was revealed. And about the lady, I have no information about it. No, no uh, the lady part was like, I mean, with regards to uh, the revelation of Quran in itself. 
that's that's after the dialogue with this lady who was there. It didn't have to be Surah Al-Fatiha, right? No, 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 not exactly Surah Al-Fatiha. So, so. so you mean Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq? Yeah. Wallahu yeah, ta'ala a'lam. Allah knows best. I have no information about it. All what I know, mm -hmm. the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu needs to go to okay. Ghar Hira, uh -huh. needs to go meditate, okay. needs to go think and ponder upon the signs of Allah. He knew, he heard, and he had the instinct of natural disposition about the religion of Ibrahim والسلام, which is called Hanif. Mm -hmm. He knew that prostrating and bowing to these idols was something not supposed to be done. And mm -hmm. this is the Prophet وسلم, and that was written by Allah. And then while he was contemplating and pondering in the cave, this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is when the revelation started from uh, in Mecca and Jabal Nur in the Ghar called Ghar Hira. Allah ta'ala. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Shall if I find any kind of information about the lady, I'll let you know. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Shukran. Wa jazakumullah khaira. If you got no question, and uh, you're not speaking about Mujahid. No, I don't think he's speaking about Mujahid. Mujahid is one of the when the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallam had a dispute. Uh, he's not speaking about Surah Mujahid. Talking about the Quran itself. Khawla bin Zama'ah. Bidnillah ta'ala, and I know I've taken, you know, it's supposed to be one hour. Uh, so this is it, you know, when you're when you doing between Maghrib and Isha, you have one hour, you can run away. So this one, you can carry on, but which is good as well. We get more time for questions and answers. So inshallah, uh, we'll, uh, I take your leave, and it's almost 11 o'clock in the UAE. And I hope that inshallah, uh, we have a good week and uh, we go to bed, uh, intending to pray Salat al-Fajr inshallah in the masjid for the men and for the women on time. And bi ta'ala, on Thursday, 9.15 UAE time, come on the same link, inshallah, I'm going, we're going to have a reminder again, the markaz, Jumeirah Islamic Learning Center is going to send a post about it. So keep tuned. And you got any question, keep it for Thursday, inshallah. Any question you got, go on Thursday, put it on there. Or if ever, I just gonna put my thing here uh, online. If you have any, any question, you can go on my website and put it there. I uh, uh, Islamic advice the com and this what we just spoke about today and all of our uh, all of our clip uh, classes is going to be uploaded on, on on YouTube and you can see it there as well and Instagram you always have one of my small small clips that are going to be put over there from time to time so visit that and inshallah you can get this clip over there if you have missed it you can share it and inshallah, if we're still alive, and if Malik al Maud did not visit us, inshallah, I will see you on Thursday. And if you're not here, then maybe you've been visited by Malik al Maud. Allah Akbar. <laughs> yeah, Allah. Inshallah, I see you on Thursday. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. شكرا Yeah, it's home coming.